Consideration for the use of dental implants with removable partial dentures. When we talk about the uh, uh, removable partial dentures, uh, remember in the earlier lectures I mentioned that when we treat the distal uh, extensions cases like candidate class 1 or candidate class 2, because the posterior doesn't have any teeth, so when we chew the food, that the distal extension area will be moving and have some slightly rotation because there's no vertical support from the tubes. So when we use an implant into a removal partial dentures, actually those implants can provide stabilities, also can control the prosthesis movement, and reduce unnatural sensations when the movement related. So it kind of like you treated those implants as a root over the area to get the support and also use the attachment over the implant to get retention. And because the posterior area will move, so the most ideal location to resist it, those force will be on the posterior occlusal contact position, which usually will be surrounding around uh, the first to the second molar area, which is the most common area the patient use for the chewing food. Now they will have several like a con uh, condition or circumstances that you are more likely to use the implant into your uh, removable partial dental treatment. The first is the unilateral abutment teeth. So for example like this, patient just only have right uh, premolar have a teeth. All the posterior on the right side and all the left side without the tubes. So most commonly, if we just use a traditional uh, partial denture design, it means that only two T's to bear 14 to 16 T's, that's not reasonable. So sometimes we will say, okay, why not we just take those two T's out and do a complete denture. But we all know that Without the two support, the complete dentures prognosis or the certification is much lower than the partial dentures. So what we can do? So we can place an implant on the opposing side to act it as a retention and a support. So you can see on this case that they place an implant on the left side. So and then they put a clasp on the right uh, premolar area. So eventually, you can still use a remote partial denture design to accommodate with this case. The second condition is a long span modification surface. So look at this case that textbook shows. This is a candy class two modification one. However, this modification even longer or larger than the candy class two area. So when we treat that that way, even though those modifications means that anterior posterior have a teeth, but it's still not enough because they almost like cross all the section, all the arch. So we need to get someone to help to prevent actual force to the remaining tooth. That's why you can see in this case, they place two implants and then to get the support and the retention. The third uh, condition is to eliminate the class for aesthetic reason. We all know that uh, we have to class, we have to use a direct retainer like a clasp, row wire clasp, eye bar on abutment tubes. For example, in this case, this is a candy class three modification two cases. So. Basically, we have to clasp on the molar and also clasp on the canine. Even though we can use an eye bar, but when patients smile, you will still able to see the clasp. So we have to look for the other alternative options that we don't really need the clasp in the front. 
That's why we can use the endpoint and then to be acted as a retention component. So right here you can see that eventually you don't need to clasp in the front. When we place an endpoint related to the removable partial dentures, except the common like a, a requirement about the bone qualities, the bone uh, densities, the bone volumes, all the stuff related to like a traditional implant placement. We also need to notice that ideally we want an implant to be placed parallel to your RPD pass of insertion. That will be a little bit difficult for the surgeon to place an implant without your framework or without your RPD design because they have no idea where is your password insertion. And that will cause more problem is that because your implant attachment uh, directions, if it's not really fit with your prosthesis password insertions, that that will cause more retention or uh, more force on the implant and eventually may cause the bone loss or the implant loss in the future. That's why right now we use more and more uh, attachment design as the locator. As you know, in the implant over dentures uh, lectures, you've been told in the complete dentures, the locator attachment has a benefit is that they can allow some uh, divergence of the degrees between the implants to the attachment. So you can see on the left side, uh, originally you can allow like 20 degrees and on the right side the extended uh, locator attachment they, right now they can allow over 40. So if a surgeon plays an implant uh, and not really follow your passive insertions that the locator abutment as attachment design will be the much better option for you. And the, the other factors that would be most commonly be ignored is the interarch space. So think about that when we do an implant with a removable partial dentures, we need a space to accommodate four different things. The first is your RPD denture a quick base. The second is your framework. The third is your attachment housing, like the locator abutment. The fourth will be your denture teeth. So you can see there are a lot of things you have to uh, fit into that space. So even though we said if a patient uh, not really lost the bone, patient have a lot of bone height, which they'll be the best for the implant placement but maybe it would not be the good case to do an implant restoration or even with the implant RPD design because you will have less indoor space. But it doesn't mean that when patients have a severe resorption, that will be easier because when patients have a severe ridge resorption, the implant location may not really in uh, ideal locations close to your uh, masticatory force. So why exactly the number we need if we want to do an implant with uh, RPD design? So let's think about that. We need uh, implant attachment housing. So if you use a locator, that will be 3.17 millimeters. Remember that locator housing is already been the list <coughs> amount of the height you need for any kind of attachment you use for the implant. The second part is your framework. So the RPD framework, the minor connector will take another one to two millimeters. The third part is a denture base. If we want, we don't want to uh, avoid the denture base structure, then ideal thickness will be around two to three millimeters. Then we talk about the tooth part. The tooth part will be related to aesthetically. So I, uh, if you check with the, the dentities you have in the scene lab, they used to be around like eight to 10 millimeters height. So if you count all in total, 
Then you will find out you will need the entire space from the gingiva to the opposing tubes need to be at this fourteen to sixteen millimeters. If you don't have those space, then you will started to sacrifice uh, those four different uh, component thickness and maybe cause more problem. Let me show you this uh, cases to show you if you don't have enough uh, space, what you gonna what you gonna encounter in the clinic. So this patient have uh, tooth number four and twelve with have an implant, and four to six actually is an implant with the tooth bridge. And because of the complications and the idea of the treatment plan, so eventually patient just have an interim uh, partial on the maxilla to replace the space. However, you can still see that on the tooth number three or on the opposing side, the tooth number 14, the, then the teeth is still missing. So patient walk into a clinic, she want to have something can really restore all the missing area he she got a mixed. So we finally comes out to say, okay, that's that why we just do uh removable partial dentures. So we can restore multiple like mixing area. However, when we deal with that, we found out on the right side that the entire space is much smaller or shorter than the requirement. So we have to uh, change our framework design. So you can see that originally we want the framework can really attach to uh, the implant locator attachment. But in this case, I even need to uh, take all the minor connectors out, be sure that I can be given more space to set up a teeth. When the case finished, you can see because of the limited space, even already I sacrificed uh, the, the framework, I still not have enough space to set the teeth and the denture base. So eventually you can see when I grind down on the tooth, the tooth occlusal part actually is lack of the groove or the cusp because that's no space to accommodate with that. So in this kind of cases, even though we uh, just help patients uh, to accommodate those missing area with one single prosthesis, but the result probably will not still be very ideal compared to the regular cases. So before you started to place an implant on the RPD cases, you have to really look through all the entire space, all the rich form, everything for your diagnosis and the treatment plan. In the end, I want to discuss an interesting topic is that could we use an implant supported crown or implant supported uh, fixed partial dentures as a RPD abutment? This concept is a very controversial opinion uh, between the different uh, doctors. In theory, we know that the implant just only can resist it to the vertical force. We, when we do an implant restoration, we want to reduce all the possible excursive contact on the implant supported crown or bridge. Just because implant is not really a good uh, candidate to uh, get the lateral excursive contact because implant doesn't have the PDL. Implant just only have osteo integrations with the bone. So it's kind of like you have a fixation with the bone. So when they got lateral movements that the research really shows that they will have more forces onto the implant which will cause the possible bone loss or even worse, the implant will fracture or implant loss. However, right now we still can see several like shortened studies saying that they really have a 
successful result when they、uh, incorporate the impound crown or bridge as a RPD abutment. I just listed those three uh, uh, top、uh, articles that you can refer to if you are interested in that. Right now, because we, when we treat more and more like O on four cases for like uh, uh, impound、uh, full identification、uh, patients. I have to say, maybe sometimes the impound can get a little bit more、uh, a successful rate when we get a lateral excursive contact. But like I said, as far as、uh, we have more evidence to prove this concept, it's really worked very well for all the patients、uh, in the dental school that we were still treated. Uh, the patient as a conservative way. So in the in the school, we will not allow you to use the implant, a crown, or bridge as a partial abutment.